Thank you. Okay. Thanks very much. It's a, it's a great pleasure to be here. I love this, the Spy Museum and have been a fan since the day it opened. Uh, and I know many of you have as well. And thank you for taking your, your lunch hour uh, to come and, and talk with me uh, about cyber war. The name of the book is Cyber War, but it really talks about three distinct phenomena, and cyber war is one of them. Uh, but cyber espionage is also one of them. Uh, and the third is cyber crime. The three phenomena, and I'll try to define each of them, but the three phenomena all occur because of what happened in the 1990s. In the 1990s, without our really thinking about it or planning it as a nation or having any real discourse about it, we suddenly realized that this thing that had been around for about a decade or two at that point, the internet, uh, held real promise in allowing us to do a huge variety of things far more cheaply. And so by moving functions that used to be performed person to person uh, or through the mail uh, into cyberspace, onto the internet and the other networks that make up cyberspace, uh, a lot of organizations were able to reduce uh, their costs. And gradually this began occurring in the 1990s and it's no coincidence that if you look at the economic statistics in the 1990s, two other things happened. One, America's productivity went through the roof, uh, especially compared to the rest of the world. And two, our economy boomed because we were lowering our costs of operation and opening up this whole new industry, the IT industry. And it all seemed like a great thing, and it was. The 1990s looked pretty good in retrospect compared to where we are now. Uh, but there was a downside, and that is that we were beginning to use a system that was designed for one purpose. We were beginning to use it for a whole series of other purposes for which it was not designed and not very good. The Internet was designed, as most of you know, uh, as a communications network for research professors at leading American universities. And it never occurred to the people who designed it, I know because I've talked to them, uh, that there would ever be any abuse on the Internet. Because after all, these are just research professors exchanging information, accessing databases, accessing libraries, collaborating across country on projects. Never occurred to them that there would be anybody like us uh, using the Internet, us untrustworthy, unwashed people, uh, you know, the public. Uh, let alone that the Defense Department, the banking system, and everything else would start using the Internet. Not just start using it for emails uh, or for web pages to communicate information, but start using it as an essential element of their functioning. An element so essential that the organizations cannot function anymore without it. And those organizations are pretty much everything when you think about it. So think about airlines. Airplanes take off. Why does that have anything to do with the Internet? Well, all too often what you see is that a big airline like Delta or Northwest and Air Canada, it's happened to almost every airline, they have all their airplanes working, all their pilots show up, all their cabin crew shows up, they've got the fuel, they've got everything they need to take off, and the entire corporation's computer network crashes, what happens? Nothing happens. The planes don't take off. You have hundreds of planes sitting on the ground, capable of flying, but the airline can't operate without its computer network. Why? It doesn't know who should be on the plane. It doesn't know what seat they should be in. It doesn't know things like the loading factor uh, on the plane of cargo and people can't figure out the fuel ratios so they sit there for hours. Or, and you've seen this happen, the air traffic control sector uh, in one part of the country has a computer hiccup uh, and the computer system goes down and planes can't, can't take off because the air traffic controllers can't see them and can't direct them. And every time that happens, and it happens unfortunately about two or three times a year, if you read the news stories, at the end it says, but there's good news, 
because the computer system that the FAA uses for air traffic control is so old, it's about to be replaced with a new, more digital system operating on Windows. <laughs> and every time I read that, I go, oh, God, it's just going to get worse. Everything. Trains. I talked to the CEO of the largest or second largest, I'm not sure which, train company, freight railroad company in the United States. And I asked him, so what is your company's reliance uh, on cyberspace? He said, well, I think of our company as basically a computer company with trains. Why? Because we line up these trains and we put cargo uh, onto them, and each car is going to a different location. And each train operating on our network has to go at a different speed. Some have to go fast, some have to go slow, some have to sit on a siding so another one will pass them. They have to stop at different places and drop off cars. Other, cars come, other trains come along and pick them up. And when our computer system fails, we just stop all the trains. I learned last week for the first time that every locomotive in the United States, in all of the freight railroads, receives a download twice a day onto its Windows XP computer. Trains. And you can go through industry after industry. Airplanes, trains, pipelines, the electric power grid. I talk a lot in the book about the electric power grid, so much so that I'm sure it gets a little much after a while. But the electric power grid is all controlled by computers. Computers decide how much power should be generated by each substation, how that power should be routed down what high tension lines. Because if you put too much power down a high tension line, the line melts. And if all of the generators aren't spinning on the network uh, at the same rate, they can explode. So I know it sounds strange, but it's true. And so the entire eastern electric power grid from Florida up into Canada, the entire Western electric power grid from Baja up into Canada. Uh, they're all interconnected, one east, one west, and Texas, of course, has to have its own. Uh, those three power grids, all controlled, and everything on them controlled by computer networks. And if suddenly something happened to these computer networks at the banks, at the power grid, at the pipelines, at the trains. Could we go back to where we were in the early 1990s and the late 1980s? Could we go back and replace those computers with whatever we did before? So that if somehow someone waved a wand and suddenly all the computers didn't work, what are the backup systems? Well, for a while in the 1990s, early 1990s, there were backup systems. Uh, whatever we had been using before we switched to computer-based controls was still around in some companies. Nowhere today that I've seen are there backup systems available. When I ask CEOs or heads of federal agencies, what if you didn't have a computer network? What could you do? The answer is, well, we send people home when computers go down. Well, what about the backup systems? Well, they're computers. And it, if you think about this, it's true. I mean, who here can still find a manual typewriter? You have a manual typewriter? Yeah, does it work? It, well, all right, so you're safe. But <laughs> for the rest of us, for the rest of us, we don't have manual systems. So we're all now reliant, every major industry, uh, every function that we do all day long, from turning on the lights to getting water out of the tap to getting money out of the ATM machine to getting on the metro to come down here, everything we do is dependent upon computer networks. And most of those computer networks are connected to the Internet in one way or another. And they're all operating, most of them, uh, are operating using software protocols that were designed about 20 uh, or 30 years ago and we're not designed to be secure. So the basic architecture of the internet, which is most of cyberspace, was never designed to be secure, and it's not. It is not. 
The result is that it is relatively easy to hack into a lot of things.